Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, Amata, and I hope you're having an amazing day. Paul is off unwell at the moment. He has Ligma, aka the flu, so he's just taking some well-earned rest. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about, first of all, Ryzen 7000, aka Zen 4. Now, obviously, we've been talking a ton about Zen 4 lately. Not just the desktop variants, of course, but, of course, recently, Phoenix. And by all accounts, Zen 4 is expected to be a bit of a monster. Now, I'm not going to go over the expected specifications and so on in this video because, again, we've talked about it a lot lately, so in case you've missed any of our recent videos, go and check those out. There will be some links in the description and there'll be some slides on screen as well. Now, one new leak that has recently popped up is the expected release date for Ryzen 7000. Now, this is a report from digitimes.com. You can, of course, find their report linked in the description below. Now, they are basically saying that they expect AMD to release Zen 4 and, of course, the AM5 platform in September of this year. Now, if that sounds at all familiar, it's because, well, this is pretty much what we've been saying for a while. So this does line up pretty much exactly with what we've been saying. Now, another thing to also keep in mind is that RTX 40 from NVIDIA will also launch around September time too. And again, this is according to our sources, etc., etc. but RTX 4090 is now being tested and that has come from sources Paul has in for various AIBs, and NVIDIA is essentially targeting the back-to-school US window. Now, obviously, things can slip, but September does make sense, not just from what we've been hearing, but historically the release date of NVIDIA cards. Now, just a bit of a reminder, RTX 30 came out in September 17th of 2020, and of course, the RTX 20 series came out in September 20th, 2018. So again, this does make perfect sense that we would see a September release date for RTX 40, and again, with, with Zen 4, to go back to that, this is what we've been hearing from various sources. So this only backs that up. Now, obviously, we are expecting AMD to reveal more about Zen 4 at Computex 2022, which actually isn't that far away. May 23rd is going to be happening. Sorry, AMD's conference is going to be happening on May 23rd. Obviously, it's going to be a CEO keynote with Lisa Su, and I am fully expecting lots more details about what they've been working on. I think it's going to be a really, really exciting Computex. Obviously, we've been talking a lot about leak specifications and expected performance benchmarks and architecture changes and all that, and it all just sounds really, really interesting, and I cannot wait to get a better look at Zen 4. Obviously, we did see a little bit of it at CES, but I'm fully expecting to get more nitty-gritty info at Computex in just a few weeks. However, we're going to move on from that to Intel's. We have yet more bad news and uncertainty surrounding Intel's arc for the desktop. Now, there's a new report from igorslab.de. You can, of course, find their reports linked in the description below this video. And they basically reached out to say that we shouldn't expect Intel arc until late summer. And again, if that sounds familiar, well... That pretty much lines up once again with what we've previously been saying. You're not going to get any prizes for guessing the reason behind it because we've discussed that the delays plaguing Intel Arc and the number one reason that always comes up is indeed the drivers. Well, unsurprisingly, Intel's AIBs and partners and so on are getting quite frustrated with the situation because, well, it's not exactly great that it keeps getting pushed back and pushed back. And again, according to Eagle sources, it is going to be late summer, so in between between sort of July and late August could be potentially the release date for Intel Arc. Now, this is just such a shame because I was really, really interested to see what Intel could actually do with the desktop. Now, obviously, we've said a thousand times at this point that the first iteration of Arc was not intended to take out like the top-end AMD and NVIDIA cards. That was going to be left to future GPUs on their roadmap. But, but still, the fact that their first GPU is having so much issues to get out of the gate is not exactly filling everyone with confidence, but... But again, according to Eagle sources, which once again do line up with what we've previously been hearing, Intel are not going to be meeting their Q2 2022 release window for Intel Arc. I want to actually like to hear some thoughts from you guys, actually, like, you know, assuming the price is actually correct for the level of performance that we're expecting, would you actually be interested in purchasing this generation of Intel Arc, or would you prefer to, you know, go with AMD or NVIDIA? 
or indeed wait for the next art card which is expected to be much more competitive on the top end? Let me know in the comments. Now one last thing before I move on to today's final topic, and it's some, some unfortunate news for the RTX 30 light hash rate cards, as NiceHash has confirmed that, well, the NiceHash Quick Miner has fully unlocked the NVIDIA LHR cards. Now obviously they were limited for Ethereum mining, but they now have been fully opened up by NiceHash. Now, I, obviously this isn't great, but People kind of saw this coming when they were announced these NHR cards that eventually people would find some ways around them. But I don't think this is going to have a huge impact on the prices for RTX 40, which of course would finally be getting to some sort of normalcy. Because, well, RTX 40 is coming out in just a few months. So while this news isn't great, I don't think it's time to run panicking and screaming in the streets or anything along those lines. Now one last thing just to wrap up, we have a tweet from kpt 7 Kimmy. of course you can find that linked below, where he discusses briefly RDNA 3. He says, quote, I doubt that RDNA 3 will use two GCDs with 3D stacking because there is no need to use MCM for only six SEs. Now I'm only mentioning this in passing, that it's possibly mono for N31, and obviously we have done videos on this in the past, but what Capiti is saying doesn't match pretty much exactly with what Paul said he's been hearing recently. As I said, Paul is unwell at the moment, but he is working on an explanation video as to what he thinks has been going on with Arnie No3 and Navi31 and so on. So of course, if you aren't subscribed, do hit that subscribe button and it will be up in the next few days where he gives his insights as to what he thinks has been going on over at AMD. Anyway guys, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, do remember to like and subscribe, just help out a great deal. And of course, do join our Discord and check out our Patreon if you'd be so kind. Either way, have a great rest of the weekend guys. Catch you later. Bye bye.